Do we have a volunteer? Come on, somebody raise your hand. What? You don't remember what happens at these kids' houses? They either forget to feed you or abuse you. <laughs> that is Leo, the Netflix hit that it was co-written and directed by Robert Smigel. It's a busy time for Smigel, who has a starring role in the movie Between the Temples, which premiered just yesterday at Sundance. Earlier this month, he found some time to chat with our own Jamie Wax here in New York, and Jamie joins us now. Jamie, good morning. Good morning, Dana. Before feature films, Smigel spent decades as a king of late-night comedy, writing for today's biggest stars and creating iconic characters of his own. Here to provide the Moron's perspective is correspondent Hank Fielding with an election analysis. Hank? <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. For nearly 40 years, Robert Smigel has been making people laugh. The bears. As a performer. Any heart attacks? I had one. Had a couple. A writer. Get a life, will you, people? <laughs> Crying out loud, it's, it's just a TV show. <laughs> an overall puppet master. I am a stormtrooper. You are a huge nerd. <laughs> Always brash with his comedy, Smigel typically cedes the spotlight to others. You're a very humble guy, I will say, just in my experience of watching you speak about your career. I say I'm a humble guy. Are, are you proud of how humble you are? I don't like to <laughs> brag about my humility. You know, I just kind of let people take it in and enjoy it. Smigel has worked alongside and launched the careers of some of today's biggest comedians, but his was an unlikely path to success. You were almost a dentist. Yes, this is something I have in common <laughs> with your, your anchor, Jeff Glor. My dad actually had an incredible practice. He developed the tooth bonding process, Dr. Erwin Smigel. So I went into pre-dental and I was horrendous at it. <laughs> and I labored through college five and a half years and it wasn't until I entered a stand-up comedy contest, just out of desperation, and I was one of the winners. And then that just turned on a switch. Like, I gotta try this. Hey, Mr. Banana Head, could you give me an eye? In 1985, he was performing in Chicago out. when Al Franken caught his act, which landed him a gig at SNL. So then I kind of figured out how to write for Saturday Night Live. And then I, I bonded with Conan and started Late Night with Conan O'Brien. As Conan's first head writer, Smigel came up with groundbreaking sketches. Hey, everybody! All right, all right, welcome, uh, welcome, Mr. President. Yeehaw, Conan! Yeehaw! Including his longest lasting. Triumph, the insult comic dog, and its signature punchline. Conan O'Brien show, it's a great show for me to poop on. <laughs> then after a couple of years, I came back to sketch comedy because Dana Carvey wanted to do a primetime show, and these were the very offices we used. We are in the writer's room. You're in uh, some oh. sort of conference room. <laughs> that, uh, of where you worked for the Dana Carvey show. <laughs> The show, as chronicled in Hulu's Too Funny to Fail, tanked in the ratings, but pushed the bounds of sketch comedy. Waiters who are nauseated by food. While discovering a pair of guys named Steve. Our fourth final special is chicken. I can't. Chicken. You can still, if you, if you listen very quietly, you can hear the, church the echoes of tears and crying. <laughs> pain we suffered, but that's okay. It all worked out. <laughs> uh, Steve Carell and Steve Colbert are doing, yeah, they're, okay. they're, they're doing yeah, pretty so, well. So is Robert Smigel, by yeah, the way. I, yeah, everybody, everybody is, <laughs> we're all fine. Come back here with Smigel landed back at SNL, this time creating the digital shorts he would turn into an art form. The ambiguously gay to woke. So I just wanted to like carve a new path and figure out New ways to be funny in that time slot. Hey, Clucky, why is the Cluckin' Chicken so chickalicious? Doing short cartoons, topical cartoons, that hadn't been done on television before. But you know, that was thrilling at the time because it was brand new. But when the first of Smigel's three kids was born, those creative ambitions were put on the back burner. Parenthood has changed you a little. Oh, God. Well, first, having a, an autistic child yes. changed everything. 
because it gives you clarity, you know, especially for like a creative person who's spent their whole lives or at least their professional lives just obsessing on, you know, their own creativity. But then Daniel was diagnosed with autism and it's like, okay, my life is his life now. While he and his wife Michelle became activists for children with autism, which includes the celebrity-studded Night of Too Many Stars fundraiser, Smigel's writing went in a new direction. This is Hotel Transylvania. Starting with two Transylvania movies and partnering with an old pal from SNL, Adam Sandler. We're both like Jewish kids who grew up with parents who just treated us like princes, you know? There weren't that many people like that at SNL who'd had that level of love from their parents, that kind of, whatever you do, you know, uh, it, you're perfect. You're you perfect. were the best one. <laughs> you have never cut hair before. I will do whatever it takes. Okay. A lot of what we wrote together had a human quality that I hadn't really explored, that side of my writing. And that comes through a little bit in the movies we've done together, the Zohan and certainly in the the wedding movie I did with him and Chris Rock. We can cancel that. Oh, thanks for all your help. I don't sound like that. Ow! Mother of Godzilla! And that? now in Leo. Leo, a 75-year-old lizard who ends up teaching elementary school students valuable lessons on growing up, is voiced by Sandler. Kid, they don't even know you. Try doing this. <laughs> it trended at number one when Netflix released it in December just so touching and so different for me <laughs> compared yes. to that for vile... me to poop on. Yes, yes. <laughs> CBS News, this is the big time. This is really something. Yeah, get out of here. And speaking of triumph, we couldn't do this story without a cameo. CBS Saturday morning. You know what they say, this is a stepping stone to the fourth hour of the Today Show. <laughs> You're a very considerate host, you know? I'm waiting. You I'm never waiting. interrupt your guests by saying something funny or interesting. <laughs> Very considerate. Thank you so much. You've been a wonderful interviewer. For me to poop on! <laughs> he watches oh, the I mean, show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he watches the show. He's so much fun, and I'm so glad he's kind of coming out from behind the yeah. shadows, you know, yeah. he's just really a great talent. The Leo, I, that looks really good. I want to go watch yeah, it now. It and it's I know good. it's animated. It's it not just for kids. For kids. It's okay, yeah. Very good. interesting. I like that we share the pre dentistry background. <laughs> yes, and he's a fan. That's why he knew that.